let's have another item about chemical kinetics about rate law so here we have three reactants a b and c we did experiments with different concentrations of a b and c and then determine the rate of the reaction after observing this one we are tasked to determine the rate of the reaction when the concentration of A is equal to 0 0.0250 molar, the concentration of B is 0 0.0500 molar, and the concentration of C is equal to 0 0.1000 molar. So we are going to determine the rate. We are going to use the rate law. So here the rate is equal to some constant times the concentration of the reactants raised to their order. So here... Uh, the concentration of A raised to some x power times the concentration of another reactant B raised to some y power times the concentration of uh, C raised to the z order. So before, again, before we can calculate for the rate, we are going to determine the value of K, X, Y, and Z here first. So let's determine first the order of the reaction. These are the x, y, z on this equation. Let's start with A. So when we focus on A, the other reactants must be held in constant. So here, let, uh, let's see where B and C are constant. Again, B and C must be constant because we are focusing on A now. So if we go to B, so B is constant on experiment 1, experiment 2, and on experiment 4. On the other hand, C is constant on experiment 1, 2, and then 3. So as you see here, both B and C are constant on experiment 1 and then experiment 2. So let's use this one to determine the order of reaction in respect to A. So here, the concentration of A increased from 0 0.05 to 0 0.1. So in this case, we increase it by a factor of 2 raised to some x power equal to. How about the change on the rate here? That's from 0 0.006625 uh, increased to 0 0.0125. Let us solve that one. So that's 0 0.0125 divided by 0 0.00625 that's equal to 2. So here the increase is by a factor of 2. So here 2 to the power of x is 2 then x is obviously 1. So in this case the order of reaction in respect to A is equal to 1. Let's proceed to B. So since our focus is on B, the other reactants Again, our focus is on B, so here the other reactants must be held in constant, that's A and also C. Let's look on the experimental data where A and C are both constant at the same time. So here, uh, it's constant on experiment 2 and 3, and also it's constant on a different concentration on experiment 1 and also experiment 4. Let's proceed to C. So C is constant where? It's constant on experiment 1, 2, and then 3. So if you observe here, where is the concentration of A and C both constant at the same time? So it's constant at the same time on experiment 2 and 3. So in this case, we're going to use experiment 2 and 3. So here, the concentration of B increased from 0 0.0500 to 0 0.1000. So in this case, the same thing, it increased by a factor of 2 raised to some y power equal to the change on the rate of the reaction. That's from 0 0.0125 to 0 0.05. So let's solve this one, how much change. 0 0.05 divided by 0 0.0125, it's equal to 4. So in this case, the rate increased by a factor of 4. So here, if 2 to the power of y is 4, then what could be y here? y is obviously equal to 2. So the order of reaction in respect to b, that's equal to 2. And lastly, we have for c. So our focus now will be on c. So here, again, focus on C. 
So while doing this, the other reactants must be constant. So in this case, let's look where uh, A and B are constant at the same time. So here, it's constant on experiment 2 and 3. Also, it's constant on experiment 1 and 4 with 0 0.05 concentration. And then let's look at B. So here, constant C B on, uh, it's constant on experiment 1, 2, and then 4. So where is the concentration of A and B both constant at the same time? So as you observe here, that's, that's constant at the same time on experiment 1 and then, and then experiment 4. So in this case, I'm going to use experiment 1 and then experiment 4. So here from 0 0.0100 to 0 0.0200, that's an increase on the concentration of C by a factor of 2, right? So here 2 to, uh, 2 to the Z power is equal to, let's see the impact on the change on the rate of the reaction. As you observe here, it's the same, right? That's from 0 0.00625 to 0 0.00625. So in this case, that's a factor of 1. So it's uh, it's just the same. It's just times 1. So in this case, the change is times 1 or it's the same. It's constant. So in this case, if 2 to the power of z is 1, then what would be z here? z is equal to 0. So in this case, this one is a zero order reaction. So we have determined the value of the orders of reaction here. The x is 1, y is 2, then z is equal to 0. So after finding this, what's the next step? The next step is finding the constant on this equation. So to find the constant, we are going to use the rate law and then we can plug in any data from any of these experiments here. So to make it easy, let's just use experiment 1. I mean the data on experiment 1. So again, it's equal to the rate is equal to some constant. Okay. Times the concentration of A. We, we have find out already the X, Y, and Z here. Let's plug them in here. X is equal to 1. This is a first order reaction. And then the concentration of B raised to some raised to the power of 2, and then here, the concentration of C raised to the power of 0, because this is a zero-order reaction. And then we are going to use again the data on experiment 1. The rate here is equal to 0 0.00625 molar per second. Let's plug this in, 0 0.00625 molar per second, equal to the constant K times the concentration of A, that's equal to 0 0.0500 molar times the concentration of B. That's equal to 0 0.0500 molar squared. And then here, that's the concent... Uh, sorry. Uh, that's 1. And then we'll put here 2. And then uh, the concentration of C here. That's equal to 0 0.0100 raised to the power of 0. Let me just fix this one. Again, on this case, I just substituted that. I did not perform by any operations here. I just put in here the rate and then the concentration of the reactants. Let us solve this one. So let's copy this one first because we're not doing anything here yet. The same with K. Then here, uh, 0 0.0500 to the power of 1, that's obviously 0 0.0500 molar, and then here, 0 0.0500 molar to the power of 2, that's equal to 0 0.05 times 0 0.0500, that's equal to 0 0.0025, so that's equal to 0 0.0025, obviously m times m, that's equal to m squared, or molar squared times this one, so 0 0.0100 to the power of 0, that's equal to 1, right? Because any number raised to the power of 0, that's equal to 1, that's 1 molar. So here, let us um, solve this one. So let's multiply this one. 
0.0500 times 0.0025 times 1 molar. Okay, 0. 0, 0. 0. 0.0500 times 0. 0.0025 is equal to 0. 0.000125. So times 0. 0.000125. Just copy the unit molar times molar times m squared. Again, that's molar times molar times molar squared. And then, the other side, copy pa rin, 0, 0, 0.0625 molar per second. Since we are finding for the K here, we divide both sides by this one. So we can, so we only have K here left. So again, I'll divide both sides by 0.000125. 0, 0, 0, 0, Am I right? Okay, that's that long zero, then one to five molar times times molar molar squared. The same thing here, so I will not write because walang space dito. So this will be cancelled, right? And then what's left here? That's k is equal to this one. 0 0.00625 molar per second over 0 0.00125 molar times molar times molar squared okay so let's divide this one let's use the space so here k is equal to again that's equal to 0 0.00625 divided by 0 0.000125 is equal to 50 so in this case, that's 50, and then how about for the unit here? So that's molar per second divided by, so of course to divide this one, we are going to do the inverse of division, that's multiplication. Then we are going to get the reciprocal of this one, that's equal to 1 over molar times molar times molar squared. Then let's cancel what we can cancel here. What's left here is 1 over seconds times molar times molar squared okay that's one over seconds times molar times molar squared so this is the constant on this case so we have determined the order of the reaction and also the k here we are now ready to determine the rate of the reaction using the rate law so it will take time to erase this one you can fast forward this video So again, this is the K here or the constant here. We're going to use the rate law now. The rate law or the rate is equal to constant times the concentration of A raised to the power of 1 times the concentration of B raised to the power of 2 times the concentration of C raised to the power of 0. So the rate is equal to the constant. The constant here is equal to 50. Then unit 1 over seconds, that's a molar times molar squared, times the concentration of A here, it's on the given, 0 0.0250 molar to the power of 1 times the concentration of B, that's equal to 0 0.0500 molar. That's raised to the power of 2 here times the concentration of C, that's equal to 0 0.1000 uh, molar raised to the power of 0. Let's uh, solve this one first. Kaning nine mga squared and 0 something. So let's copy this first. Seconds times molar times molar squared. And then here, 0 0.0250 to the power of 1. It's obviously the same 0 0.0250 molar. Then here, 0 0.05 to the power of 2, so 
0 0.0500, 0 0.0500 times 0 0.0500 is equal to 0 0.0025, 0 0.0025 molar squared. And then this one, 0 0.1000 to the power of 0, it's obviously equal to 1. Then here we have 1 molar here. Then after we can multiply everything, so let's use this space here. That's 50 times 0 0.0250 times 0 0.0025 times 1. Let's solve this one. Again, that's 50 times 0 0.0250 times 0 0.0025 times 1 is equal to 0 0.003213125. Right. 0. Point, okay. 0 0.003125. 0 0.003125. And then here for the unit we can cancel here M, then also here M and also we have the m squared here and also the m squared here. What's left is we have 1 times m. That's obviously m. And then we have what's left here is second. So here, the rate of the reaction is equal to 0 0.003125 molar per second.